Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to EthIS. Uh, my name is Matthew Liu. I'm one of the co-founders of Origin Protocol. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the infrastructure and the user experience that's needed to make Ethereum go mainstream. Um, how do we actually have large-scale uh, commercial and consumer transactions on Ethereum? Uh, and a lot of what we're talking about is actually what we've personally encountered while building Origin Protocol. Uh, just to begin, um, since we are in Hong Kong, everyone here uses WeChat. Uh, for anyone that's interested in following along with the conversation, uh, joining our community, I do invite you to scan that beautiful QR code on the lower right side of the slides to begin with. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit, um, very briefly, about our company, what we're trying to do, and then we're going to talk about some of the um, interesting uh, infrastructure as well as user experience challenges that uh, we as a community, and also we specifically as Origin, are hoping to solve in the coming uh, weeks, months, and of course years. Uh, so Origin's goal is to build a platform that will enable many decentralized marketplaces all over the world. We are doing this primarily for four reasons. Uh, two of them are largely around financial incentives, and two of them are largely around uh, the ability to create access for goods and services to people that otherwise would not have them. On the financial side, we want to be able to lower fees that current middlemen are taking. So all these marketplace operators, they take 10, 15, 20% of the take rates. We can reduce this to near zero or even zero with decentralized marketplaces. Secondly, we want to uh, redistribute value. So how do we actually use crypto economic incentives to give early stakeholders, whether they're the first 100 uh, drivers on a new decentralized Uber or first 100 hosts on a new decentralized Airbnb, uh, to actually have a stake in those marketplaces that they're building. Now let's turn towards the access of goods and services. So we want to be able to promote open and free commerce all over the world. Uh, in Hong Kong, in the United States where I'm from, in Western Europe, um, censorship is not really an issue, but in other parts of the world, um, oftentimes you cannot get goods and services uh, because the government is limiting them. Um, so we want to do our part to promote open and free commerce all throughout the world. And finally, we believe there's an opportunity to serve the two billion people that are currently unbanked across the world. That's almost a third of the world's population that does not have credit cards, checking accounts, savings accounts. Uh, they're not able to participate in the digital economy. And we believe that now, with the advent of many, many cheap Android phones uh, in the developing world, as well as digital cryptocurrencies that don't require the permission of governments to be used, that there are these now two billion people that over the course of the next five or 10 years are going to be able to transact with each other in a peer-to-peer -peer way um, on digital marketplaces, hopefully powered by Origin. Now, there's a lot of work to do, though. Uh, Vitalik, um, just uh, about a year ago, said, so total crypto coin market cap just hit 0.5 trillion today, but have we actually earned it? Um, now, we all know we're in a bit of a bear market, and the market cap right now of all combined cryptocurrencies is about 200 uh, billion rather than 500 billion, but I still ask the question, have we actually earned it? And I think the answer is still no. We actually have not gone mainstream yet. We have not actually solved many of the problems that decentralization and blockchain technology are purportedly going to solve. And there's really a lot of work that we have to solve. And there's a very important perspective that I would like to put forward to um, everyone in the audience here today, which is those of us in the room, those of us working in the space, uh, we oftentimes care about the ideology of decentralization. We care about the potential of decentralization. But what about the millions and millions of users uh, and or businesses that we're trying to serve. Do they actually care about decentralization for, the, um, um, for that ideology? And the answer is no. They actually care about whether or not uh, their problems are being solved. Are they getting value out of the infrastructure, platforms, dApps that we're building for them? Uh, right now, we have a lot of work to do. Um, and, and at Origin, what we've seen is that um, we've encountered uh, and observed um, at least two classes of problems that prevent mainstream adoption. So the first of which has been talked to ad nauseum um, at today's conference already. It's really from the infrastructure ground up. So from layer one, how do we actually have sca uh, scalability? How do we have higher TPS? Um, and Vitalik probably put it best when we talked about the blockchain trilemma. How do you have decentralization, scalability, and security all simultaneously? It's really, really hard, uh, potentially impossible. So there are trade-offs that are going to have to happen. 
Uh, but this infrastructure problem does need to be solved in order for developers to be able to build um, useful applications on top of the base infrastructure. Uh, so there are various solutions. I'm not going to go into the detail here. You've heard from uh, other speakers talking about plasma and state channels and uh, uh, layer two solutions, et cetera. Um, so we'll skip past that, but let's just acknowledge that this is one of the big deterrents of Ethereum and other um, blockchain cryptocurrency technologies going mainstream. What about the other way though? And so this is an area that Origin has been actually doing a lot of research, prototyping, uh, and a little bit of innovation in. What if we look at it from a top-down perspective rather than a bottom-up perspective? So let's look at this from a user experience perspective. Think about what we need to build to create easy-to-use experiences that millions of users um, can actually use. And then what is the uh, developer platform, what is the developer infrastructure we need to support that? And what are the goals of that? And then how does that all um, uh, play nicely with the actual um, existing blockchain infrastructure um, and decentralized technology that we're playing with today? And so there's actually a very, very long list, but today we'll talk about five main problems that we've seen at Origin uh, and we believe are very, very widespread amongst uh, DAP developers currently working in this space. First problem I'll highlight, um, wallets are extremely difficult to use compared to traditional accounts. Uh, email and password. Uh, actually, we heard from Oscar from Status um, talking about that very same challenge. Um, most users are very familiar with their existing paradigm, um, phone number, email to access their information, and this concept of having uh, an Ethereum wallet with a private key is very, very foreign and difficult to manage. Secondly, people on the Ethereum network cannot really communicate with each other right now. Wallet owners cannot easily message each other, they can't really interact. That's a problem when you're uh, talking about doing business with one another or even just having communication. Third, um, Ethereum, as well as all the other uh, blockchains right now, they require some sort of fee for processing these transactions. So gas is required uh, even for non-transactional interactions. And what about, I mean by this is, yes, it probably makes sense if I'm sending you know, 10 Ether to my friend that there's a certain amount of gas that's being paid. But it makes far, far less sense if I'm trying to click a button on an app and that actually asks me, the user, to pay for the gas, a computational cost, running a very, very basic operation. For example, updating my profile information. Um, that's an unacceptable user experience. Um, another problem that we have are that browsers right now, um, special browsers or um, wallets, are required to actually interact with the blockchain. And so right now we have solutions like MetaMask, uh, we have like Trust Browser, et cetera. And again, these create huge user frictions. Mainstream users do not want to go through these hurdles when they're using these new decentralized applications. Uh, and finally, um, for today, uh, currency volatility actually prevents real usage. Currency volatility means that people are hoarding tokens, they're actually thinking about it from a speculative perspective, they're thinking about it from a trading perspective, rather than how do these tokens actually interact with these applications, how are they useful, um, and that takes away from the true utility that we're trying to achieve. Let's talk about these one by one. Uh, let's talk about user identity first and the concept of not actually having a traditional uh, email address and password. How do we actually solve this? Well, the main goals of decentralization here are not to actually make things more complicated for these users. It's actually to give them self-sovereign identity. The reason that the old model of having an email address and password with a centralized service, let's say Google or Facebook, is a bit broken is that Google and Facebook own your own data, or sorry, own the user's data. In contrast, in this decentralized world, what we really want is for users to own their own data and have their own uh, agency over that data as to when they want to share with applications, when they want things to be public versus private. And so the way that we're approaching this at Origin um, is to work on the ERC-725 standard. The ERC-725 standard is proposed by Fabian, who is also the creator of ERC-20, uh, the creator of the Mist browser as well as Web3, um, one of the best known developers from the core Ethereum team. And so this new standard uh, allows users to have control over their uh, own identity. Your identity information is actually stored in an identity smart contract that is associated with your Ethereum wallet. Now, you can then take this smart contract and have it interact with one or many what are called third-party attestation providers. And these third-party attestation providers to help you verify your identity. Um, so in our world, we actually are running an origin attestation provider that will, in fact, allow users to verify their email address, um, as well as their phone number, 
uh, or potentially an address. And so now um, this uh, user has that identity that they can port over to many different applications. Um, we just uh, helped push forward the ERC 25 alliance uh, with Fabian and a number of other projects. I encourage you guys to check it out. Self sovereign identity. Decentralized messaging. So I mentioned previously that users right now have not been able to communicate with each other. We've recently prototyped a new uh, decentralized messaging protocol that is secure, auditable, and of course decentralized. Um, this is something that can be used on the Origin platform, but is also totally open source and can be used by many other applications. Uh, think of this as the beginnings of a decentralized WeChat. Uh, Ethereum users will be able to communicate with each other uh, just by having their wallet addresses and then generating an ephemeral messaging key. So we think this is going to be a big uh, step forward in solving that user experience challenge. Um, next, we are working on a mobile wallet. So think of this as the next version of a decentralized Alipay. So there are all these different uh, apps right now that want to use cryptocurrencies, but in order for them to actually have users interact with it, it's a very complicated experience. We have a very, very lightweight mobile application that can serve as a, a wallet payment mechanism that can then allow many other dApps to you know, uh, interface with these users. Next, this is a, uh, a new innovation that uh, will attempt to get, uh, get rid of the uh, gas issues. So right now applications um, do require, these decentralized applications do require users to pay for gas on all these interactions. And this is very inefficient, creates a lot of user friction. Uh, we're developing a new way to have proxy contracts to allow DAP um, creators to actually pay for gas on behalf of users. So now if I'm using this new decentralized application, I'm able to take you know, 20 different actions, click on buttons, um, update information, post in the blockchain, but that decentralized application can actually pay for my gas. This allows users to get onboarded much more easily and reduces that friction. Finally, um, this is an area that Origin is not working on today, but I wanted to mention it because I think it's so important. Um, users are not really interacting with many applications via tokens right now because there's so much uh, currency volatility. It's really, really hard to determine if you're spending uh, the right amount of money, whether it's Ether or a given utility token, because it's going up 20% one day and then down 10% another day. And so at Origin, we believe that uh, one or more stable points is absolutely essential before there's going to be mainstream adoption of uh, decentralized applications. There's various different strategies. Um, there's the collateral back strategy, uh, there's game theoretic designs. Um, some of the better known companies in the space include uh, Basis, Fragments, Maker, obviously, um, TrueUSD, which is actually backed by US dollars. Um, anyway, so at this point, I will close and basically um, skip through a couple other slides since we're a bit short on time. Um, but essentially, um, there are many, many different um, efforts that we actually, as a community, need to push forward. We need to actually make it so that users that otherwise don't care about decentralization uh, are able to use decentralized applications and not really know that they're you know, these new decentralized apps. They need to be as good from a user experience perspective as decentralized equivalents today. Um, and so again, to summarize, there are many, many things that we have to build. At Origin, we're working on self-sovereign identity, we're working on decentralized messaging, we're working on sponsored gas, we're working on a, a mobile wallet. And other people are working on stable points. These are some of the things that, from a top-down perspective, the user experience perspective down, that need to be solved before there will be mainstream adoption. Uh, thank you very much. If you want to learn more about what we're doing, you can check out um, all our different social channels. Again, you can scan that uh, QR code to get in touch with us directly. Uh, visit our website, OriginProtocol.com, or join our Telegram or Discord, where we do a lot of our collaborative work. Thank you very much.